In the beginning, a garden was planted, enclosed within the earth, in the east, the Orient, far east, says Enoch before the flood, and Noah who lived there and mapped it in the Philippines. The Bible has always led there, and even Bible historians knew how to read the Hebrew, such as Josephus in 90 AD, Lactantius, an African in 310, and in 550, Cosmos, the Greek monk and merchant traveler who went to the Indies, wrote in Alexandria, Egypt, Africa, Christian topography, and he mapped paradise as the Philippines. That map was even published in the Greek edition of the Bible at one time. A 6,000 year track record, forgotten today by illiterate scholars. They have no education on this topic. Let us explore this massive trove of ancient maps. Israel is not east, and a spring is a spring, not a river and must be fed by a mega river as its source and must connect to three other heads as well, all rivers, and actually salt water even. Can they read? Africa is not east nor in Shem's far east, where the garden has always resided. Mesopotamia is the occult creation myth of the Nephilim, nice scholars. Modern rivers from rain did not even exist before the flood, and the Bible never uses the word Tigris ever in the original Hebrew. Why do modern scholars have no clue when the evidence is so vast? The Garden of Eden revealed, resolving the 6,000 year testimony, marking the Far East. Now available in print only, no ebook, on Amazon and Shopee Philippines, over 75 high resolution color historic maps with accurate interpretation no one can truly dispute. Get your book now and a new series begins. Did you know that Christopher Columbus, or perhaps his brother with his mindset and research, uh, because that's what this shows, uh, or perhaps a friend with his mindset and research, hmm, uh, created a map around 1490, according to some sources, uh, such as the one we are able to attain, uh, this high resolution map. Uh, that's their date, not ours, uh, and it's fine. Others attempt uh, dates within a decade or so of that, uh, which really changes nothing, so who cares. Uh, and whether Christopher Columbus himself created this map, uh, or his brother using his research, uh, or his friend or acquaintance using his research, uh, once again, who cares? Uh, it, it is incredibly unacademic to try to challenge based on that and be so illiterate as to not know what Columbus's research showed. Uh, it's amazing. It's the same research from the same dude, ultimately, and it matches his research. One of the dumbest criticisms we've seen in academia, academia uh, in, a, in a literate, ignorant statement that uh, Zipangu is missing from this map, so we got to throw it out. It, it can't possibly be accurate because Columbus was obsessed with Zipangu, the gold of Marco Polo. Yeah, you know, it is incredibly idiotic to play such illiterate games when Columbus very clearly identifies that the Garden of Eden is the same land as Zipangu, oops, which is the same land as Ophir and Tarshish and Upaz of the Bible. The same archipelago, all in the far east, just north of the equator, south of the Tropic of Cancer. Gee, what could that be? Maybe it's Africa. All of these concepts are represented on this map when he plots a large island with islands around it uh, that he labeled paradise. Yeah, he means, and he says so, 
the Garden of Eden itself. That is the only label he needed as he equated the land of gold uh, by the other names of his research. And by the way, he also labels Ophir on the map. It's, it's not labeled, uh, you know, plotted uh, as a plot point, but it's there in the description, the three-year journey uh, of Solomon. So yeah, he's equating all of that. I mean, it's amazing to me that they can play so dumb and look like a clown circus, and people say, gee, I, uh, the PhD said, the PhD said, blah, blah, blah. That's it, because that's all they know on this topic. They are illiterate. They have no clue what they're talking about, and it shows in their question that they didn't bother to test a bit, but you do that. You take this video and you test it. Prove all things. The point here, is we have a modern view of how we should all have been reading maps all along, connecting the ancient worldview with that of Columbus, ah, which really brings it all together even into modernity. Even though the Garden of Eden disappeared from maps, well, that doesn't mean the garden disappeared. It just means that the elite in charge of the mindset took it off. Well, why'd they take it off? That's the question. Ask them. Uh, because they need to answer for that, don't they? You know, it's the same as the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Germans, the French, the Italians. Uh, you know, they all knew this data. They all knew this information, uh, and even Magellan as well. Uh, but in the late 1400s, 1500s, this was known. This was now known. There was no doubting. The perspective is extremely clear, yet muddied by unacademics, such as I mentioned already. Uh, there were even British, not the government, nor the East Indies Company, no, no, they were paying propagandists to combat these, well, oh no, they didn't actually combat any of these facts, they just ignored them. Uh, since 1625, which we caught them and exposed that in other videos, but other British even explorers and map makers, of which we have some of those maps in these books, in the book, uh, as well, uh, that do, in fact, locate the Garden of Eden in the Far East, specifically in the Philippines. Now, we're going to start here more so uh, toward the end of the journey in 1490 here, uh, or roundabouts, whenever the actual date was. really doesn't matter. Within a decade of there. Uh, understanding this was actually the view of, oh, oops, the first book of Enoch in 4000 B.C., and the Book of Jubilees, where Noah wrote directions around the earth and mapped the Garden of Eden, uh, around 2500 B.C., recorded by the angel in heaven, who then shared that with Moses on Mount Sinai, and it was republished in 1700 B.C., and has been there all along. It's still there in the Book of Jubilees. The first two maps of the world, the oldest in all of history, actually identify the Philippines as the Garden of Eden. This map follows the same mindset in 1490, which is a 6,000 year mindset. That ain't just a little data, 6,000 years of it, folks. It is the narrative and it's how you read these maps. It always has been. Uh, you know, those are the exception and, you know, men pretend not to be able to read, uh, they offer speculation uh, when this has always been so well identified. Uh, but again, you have to understand the mindset. Now we're going to go through, we have a whole video coming just on the mindset and the multiple videos. We're going to talk about the Ganges as the Pisan River, which Josephus said, and you know some other things like that. And we'll show you the origin of where some of these concepts came from. Uh, and we're going to deal with some other things too that'll blow your mind. Uh, which are coming next, like Marco Polo's account uh, of the uh, land of gold that he learned about in China, the Chinese name Zipangu, uh, which actually tells you very specifically where it is. That's a geographical marker, even in name. Uh, it is the uh, creation god of Taoism uh, by name there as well. Uh, kind of hard to miss, yet scholars miss it. It's also kind of hard to miss that he gives you directions to the southeast and he also gives you uh, an account of when they would travel and and how the prevailing winds worked and the return journey from 
Zipangu to the Philippines, I mean, I'm sorry, to China, uh, which occurred at a certain month of the year, actually fits the prevailing winds of a return trip from the Philippines, whereas if you were taking the same trip at the same time from Japan, well, according to Japanese records, you would end up in Korea. Oops, wrong country. Pretty hard to miss China, you would think, but they would. The Indian land of gold we're going to deal with, uh, Swarnadweepa, right, which is really just Gold Island, uh, and that is going to just blow you away because, folks, that's been on a map all along. Not just one, many maps over centuries, and we're going to show some to you. This is going to blow you away. If you have the book, you can read that uh, already. If you haven't, you, you should. These are high-resolution maps, and you, you're going to see them far clearer there. We don't know what YouTube is going to res up or down and, and how well these are going to project, but we'll explain along the way here. Uh, in this series, but we're not releasing an ebook for that reason because it would be all low resolution and that just defeats the purpose. The Muslim land of gold, as all of these are the same islands. See, they all went to islands, by the way. None went to a peninsula. None, period, including Ophir and Tarshish, which the Bible says are islands and islands and islands. And I, I think they might be islands. Never wants to say peninsula. Uh, they are on maps that way, and academia is really ignoring those maps. Uh, it has no bearing on anything. Willing ignorance is not exactly a position. Uh, they need to learn how to learn, how to research, really. Uh, the amount of mental gymnastics and propaganda on this topic is vast. There's no doubt about that. But we are going to sift through that and crush it now in this series and in the book which really already has, if you read it, a uh, 6,000-year history of maps which define the Garden of Eden in the Far East, more specifically in the Philippines. Their entire mindset leads there from its origin, which you can already derive from a simple rendering of a conceptual map. It's that easy. Uh, in origin, academia and Bible scholarship does not even remotely know nor understand, including those calling themselves a discipline of cartographers who don't know how to read maps. That's pretty sad, uh, but we've read plenty of books uh, like The Golden Chair Sinesis, one of the dumbest books ever written. Uh, that claims that the Malay Peninsula is, uh, is that, uh, and the reality is, uh, the fact that they're calling it a peninsula, which Ptolemy did in error, uh, really in fraud, uh, it shows already they don't know the narrative at all. Uh, the guy's illiterate. He's not a cartographer, not a real one. Uh, he's faking, you know, and, and that's pretty sad, but it's true. We will understand this by the end of this series, uh, and this will accentuate the book because we're going to expound on things uh, a little more content-wise than, than what we have in the book. Uh, because it was full color, uh, we saved some of the data uh, and held it back for the series, so this is going to be really good. Let's begin with the 1490, thereabouts, Columbus map. Now, this map doesn't make textbooks, which frankly is rather hard to believe, uh, that, you know, Columbus or his brother or his friend uh, following his research and representing his mindset, because it does, firmly, 100%, uh, actually had a map created. Uh, and these so-called academics, well, they refuse to acknowledge it. In fact, when the guy, the, the French uh, historian, uh, took it to their international convention, uh, you know, he just got a, a whole lot of naysaying and uh, just crap, uh, a lot of BS, really. That's what it is. Uh, why? Because it doesn't fit their racist, because it is racist, sorry, but it is. You, you're standing against a people group. You are. And you're doing so in fraud, hiding with the colonial worldview, hiding what the Philippines has always been, which we've proven already before this series and book, but now, oh. Ouch. Yeah, it is really done. There's nothing left to discuss after the end of this one. Uh, you can search even for this map and very little is even said about it. Why? 
Uh, they will go into some strange map Columbus never said he even used. Uh, Yale University does that, in fact, and just praising how, oh, he may have used this map. Well, why don't you bother Yale to read what Columbus said? He used two maps, according to his own journal. That's what he wrote. Can you read, Yale? It's pretty bad when one of the top universities in the world is so dumb on a topic like this, and they make themselves that, so we're calling them what they are. Stupid is as stupid does, right? Forced Gump. Uh, but they forget that in basis, this is based on the 1492 behind globe data. Uh, and we'll cover that a little here too, though it'll just be a little review at the end. Um, and as well, uh, you know, Columbus said so. Whoops. I, I mean, it's hard to understand how they can miss this stuff. They don't know his words, clearly, uh, and they certainly don't represent them. Uh, nor his mindset. So why would we even listen to even a PhD who clearly is just playing along as a Pharisee dunderhead? Uh, we'll get there. And again, why would they do that? Why would they make themselves look so stupid? Well, it, there's only one reason. It's called propaganda. Uh, they're steeped in a mindset, whether they even see it or not. They, I'm not saying that they're doing it on purpose. Uh, many are not. They're just plain deceived as you and I used to be. No longer. But we'll get there. Uh, this is the map right here. Though they cannot pinpoint Christopher Columbus uh, himself pen, you know, penning these maps, uh, no one has CCTV footage uh, of Columbus actually drawing the map himself. It is his research, period. And there's nothing to discuss on that. We're going to show you a reference even uh, from a scholar who says exactly that. Uh, they attribute uh, this map to him in circles, uh, but then they debate it highly, heavily. It's so debated. Well, because they're just playing like they, they can't read. Uh, because if they could, they would know there really is no debate. Yeah, you can debate that Christopher Columbus didn't, but maybe his brother did, or maybe a friend did. Uh, but what you can't do is you can't say it's someone that didn't know his research, someone that clearly wasn't uh, you know, acquainted with Columbus because it's representative of his entire mindset here. There's really nothing to discuss on that. And there's no new data of his uh, exploration. So we know that it really was created uh, before 1500 and probably closer to 1492 uh, and maybe before, like the date says, 1490. Again, that's not our date. We didn't date it. We're just using the source where we got the map and it said 1490, so so did we. We're just using what they said. Now, they attribute that to him in some circles, and they'll debate. But what is not in question is that era, uh, the, the one of Columbus. Uh, the basis is his research here, uh, that of Columbus. The mindset is that of Columbus. And the location of paradise, the Garden of Eden, is most certainly that of Columbus. But maybe somebody else created the map. Well, who cares? It's Columbus. It has his name written all over it because it's his research, which is unique. Uh, now, this map is on display. By the way, the, the, the thinking is, is that actually this is the map he created in order to pitch uh, the king of Spain uh, to fund the trip. And that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Uh, he didn't necessarily need to create a map, by the way, because he already used two maps that show the same thing as this map does. Oh, oops. Again, his data is the same. This map is on display at uh, uh, galleries and uh, was acquired at the uh, National Library of France, uh, who still has a copy, uh, in which a French historian there, decades later, uh, concluded this was a map by Christopher and Bartholomew. He's, he's got both, both brothers. And you know what? That's probably the case. Uh, Bartholomew was a map maker. Period. That's not up for discussion. There's no question. I don't think any scholar would even try to argue with that. Doesn't doesn't matter if they do. They'd be wrong. Um, Christopher Columbus dabbled in it. Uh, was he as experienced? No, it doesn't appear so. But this is his research, so it doesn't matter. Uh, he clearly was involved, regardless. So uh, others say, you know, nah, -uh, and that's about it because they offer nothing to refute it, really. Uh, nothing credible. I mean, they'll ask a question, but just because they ask a question doesn't dispute anything. 
uh, it, what it does show is that they're illiterate on the topic. They don't even know what they're talking about. They don't know what Columbus wrote. They don't know what he represented. So how would they even know? Why do they even bother asking questions? You know, literacy makes them look really bad. You would think they'd care about that, but it doesn't seem they do. This map is credible regardless of these questions or this one question of authorship, uh, as the dating really is not questioned uh, by anyone legitimate within a decade, which is good enough. Let's blow this up though and take a look at the detail. This is gonna this is gonna blow your mind. Uh, so many scholars ignore this. Uh, and why isn't this in our textbooks is an amazing question once you read this and, and realize what it represents. Notice the circle to the left here. Uh, on this map, it's, it's basically a nautical chart to, to the right. Uh, and then the left is, is a circular uh, representation of uh, a portion of the Earth. I mean, you know, obviously he didn't know about the Americas yet either when this was created. Again, showing it was before Columbus's voyage. Uh, that is going to be detail, especially labeling the location of the Garden of Eden. It's right there on this map, paradise, right there on this map. Wow. Uh, which again matches Columbus's mindset and research in written form, uh, which we've really already covered in much detail, but we'll go through a little at the end as well. As we blow up this circle on the left, here it is. Uh, look at this detail and now... Let's zoom in even more because we have this in really high resolution, which is great. Uh, don't know how it's going to render on your screen, but again, the book will have it in high resolution. So, But let's zoom in on the Orient portion here, uh, and you're going to get this right away. It's, it's going to be a wow. Wait. Setting all of the buffoonery uh, objections aside, let's just read this map. Let's simply read it and understand it. After thousands of years, this map pulls it all together. No matter who created it, it really doesn't matter. It's a credible map because the information is accurate. Again, the dating is not actually in question, uh, again, to within a decade. So the, the only thing is authorship. Uh, notice how good this map is getting here and by the way there's plenty of credible ancient historic maps that they don't know who actually authored y you do realize that right uh plenty uh just as there's plenty of books in the bible that they cannot uh 100 percent connect who actually wrote it even though the book tells you who wrote it uh duh yeah uh yeah they play that game and they're doing the same with this Notice, uh, though, just how good this is. Again, this is no surprise as it is showing the same position that maps have shown for thousands of years, which we're going to cover in this series, and we certainly do in the book. Read it. Uh, they're in high resolution over there. Uh, we won't be able to do that in the series, and that's, again, why there is no ebook on this one. We can't control whether YouTube, you know, takes us high def or not. We, we don't know. Uh, they're supposed to, but, you know, it's life, internet connections. There's all kinds of details. So you can see Sri Lanka and true India, exactly where we know India to be. Uh, now we'll cover, by the way, I say true India because India in detail is far vaster in ancient references than what we call India today. Now I will explain that in more detail in the series. Notice this map of Columbus says, the garden is not in India. Whoops. Yeah, you see he's passing that, uh, it, taking an eastern route here. We're going to stick with that perspective because he hadn't taken a western route yet. And, of course, he never made it there anyway, but Magellan did. Uh, now, we go further east, and there is the Burmese Peninsula, Myanmar, uh, labeled Aria. Oops. Wait a minute, that's not the Malay Peninsula, because that's coming next, and it's right there on the map. Oops, uh, yeah. See, the area Chersonesis, or Golden Peninsula of Ptolemy, which is an erroneous term, he changed the very famous, credibly uh, mapped, or in geography, even from those like Pliny the Elder, who never said it was a peninsula, but famously said it was an island very specifically. He talks about it having a promontory, which is just a ragged point, a rocky point, and that's it. 
uh, which islands have. That doesn't change it to a peninsula. And he was a geographer, so he wasn't confused about the difference between the two. That is illiterate. And I know Arthur Thomas Suarez attempts that, and it's stupid is what it is. He's no geographer when it comes to this. He is playing around in propaganda, whether he even knows it or not or knew it or not. Uh, in all credible references in history, it is an island. In the Bible, it is an island. Oops. <laughs> yeah. And that's the origin of the narrative. It's an island. That's it. Period. Uh, and again, uh, Ptolemy was never referring to Malaysia, and this map gets that. It gets that the area of Ptolemy, which is not actually area, again, because area is Ophir, uh, and it is Luzon Island, Philippines. Uh, and we're gonna, even going to show you that in this video. Uh, it was Burma, and he ran out of map, Ptolemy did after, uh, you know, basically Burma, he encloses the Indian Ocean, uh, and he placed things there, islands, Sabadiba, Yabadiba, or Yabadibi, uh, Katagara, uh, Maniola, uh, as well as the area Chersonesis, he calls it, again, it's an island, it's actually Luzon, uh, and then you take that and you correct it to what Magellan said, uh, directly addressing Ptolemy especially and all cartographers before him who placed it too far south and he tells you how far to adjust for it. Oops, that doesn't work. Then, still heading east, oh wait, oh, that's not a dragon's tail. There's the Malay Peninsula and Columbus passes that too as that is not the Garden of Eden, see, nor is it the land of gold in history, nor is it even what Ptolemy was representing or really misrepresenting because Ptolemy was wrong and corrected by Magellan, also really by Columbus and many others. Uh, that is the British propaganda and the Portuguese who controlled that area before the British, Malaysia and Indonesia, uh, the British forgot the Portuguese and Spanish data completely. They forgot that Magellan ever lived. They forgot that Columbus uh, did this research and proved it out. Uh, they walked knowledge back a thousand years in sheer propaganda. Uh, and well, who cares what those racists thought at any point? Because that's what they are. Uh, they're liars and they're proven to be so. Even again, paying propagandists, which they've caught them. Uh, they can't even read a map. Uh, they're not trying to. That's not their intent. Uh, they're not trying to teach us. They're trying to squash a narrative because they don't want us to know where the land of gold and the Garden of Eden is. Why? Because that's where the Holy of Holies is. And when you hate Yahuwah, as they do, most academics do, um, and many of these uh, you know, fall in that category, uh, then, well, yeah, that's what you do, right? Uh, this is why they try to box this map into a category of well, it's not real history, even though it actually is very firmly so. Uh, it's illiterate uh, because they ignore it, uh, which really is their only position, ignorance. Exactly how they position uh, themselves trying to disprove the Philippines. They just ignore it, that's all. Uh, that's not academic. Uh, enough of that. Uh, once we pass the melee tip and round the corner, turning left or to the north, Boom! There is a giant island enclosed within the earth. Uh, it's colored in gold, and, and those are uh, proposed to be diamonds. But regardless, it's within the earth, uh, enclosed in those, because a garden is enclosed, right? The word gan in Hebrew, which is interpreted garden, is garden, but it is an enclosed garden. You'll see many of these maps, which we'll show you. Uh, I think we'll do a whole video just on... Uh, the different representations of the Garden of Eden. And this is really cool because they draw it on the maps. They draw Adam and Eve with the Tree of Life uh, and, you know, many times with an apple, even though it's not the right fruit. Uh, and and they'll, they'll draw it within some sort of fenced-in, enclosed boundary, even a ring of fire on one map. Uh, and that's because that comes from Enoch. Enoch saw the Garden of Eden within the earth. It is enclosed within the the earth. It's never been up here. Uh, so what's that there though? What, 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 what's that map say? Can you read that? I hope you can. Uh, if not, we're going to show you a cleaner view, so don't worry. Uh, we, we're going to try to do that with all of these maps we can, uh, where we can give you, you know, just kind of more of a text view sketching 
uh, that really shows you what they say, because sometimes it's kind of cursive writing. It's not always easy to read. I get that. We have the same challenge. Uh, there are services you can go to uh, that, that render facsimiles, and they'll really blow up the details sometimes. And you can start to read things you couldn't read before. That's cool. Uh, we can't quite do that, and we can't use their their maps. Their, their version is their, uh, their copyright, but we can't use these. All the maps we're using, by the way, uh, we have a right to use. Uh, we've even purchased rights in some cases, so we're not playing around. Uh, we did this right. What are those islands that, uh, well, uh, basically being surrounded there, uh, or surrounding that, you know, that earthly paradise as it's uh, marked? Well, that is the South China Sea, uh, and those are the Philippines. Uh, it's between China to the northwest and the Malay Peninsula to the southwest. Gee, what islands are those? Uh, oh, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm a cartographer, and I don't know where the Philippines is. Pretty bad, but that is a fact for many of these so-called academics and Bible scholars who cannot read a map. Yes, Columbus is very clear in his research that he is the Garden of Eden specifically when he says paradise. The terrestrial paradise, in fact, is what he says, the earthly paradise. So it is most specifically the Garden of Eden. Now, if you head further north again, that's this uh, Cathay. Uh, Cathay is China, very well preserved. Anyone that doesn't know that, look it up. It's very easy to confirm. There's even a Cathay Airways uh, from China. <laughs> I mean, they, they tell you they're Cathay to this day. So not a surprise and not hidden. Uh, well connected. Just below the Tropic of Cancer, uh, this island, uh, this massive, you know, island uh, exists with other islands surrounding it. Smaller, of course. Uh, again, this is the structure of the Garden of Eden within the Earth. And it is the Philippines. It's nothing else. There's nothing else there. There is no other option. And there's nothing to discuss on that. There, there's no debating. That's the Philippines. Look at the map. Okay, you didn't get it? Look at the map again. Because you can't miss it. It is nothing else. By the end of this series, there will never be a valid debate again on this topic. Never. This book nails it. It's done. It's over in discussion. And really, we already proved our position. Uh, in our Viral Solomon's Gold series. Uh, check it out if you haven't. Uh, and in our 384-page book, The Search for King Solomon's Treasure, supported by a 300-page source book. Uh, who does that? Well, I don't know of anybody who's done that, really. Um, maybe someone has, but uh, that extensively especially, I don't know of anybody. Uh, the Search for King Solomon's Treasure, free in ebook. Uh, or you can get it in print if you want uh, at ophirinstitute.com. All the links are there. Now, the final smackdown. Here we go. Uh, but are we reading this map correctly? Really? Are we sure that we're not misreading it? I mean, couldn't that be uh, that, that island there, you know, that's that's north of the Malay Peninsula, that's that's on the map right there and, and, and southeast of China? Couldn't that be the Malay Peninsula itself? Uh, even though that's down there south. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, wait, wait. Couldn't that be Africa? I mean, I, come on. I mean, I, I know it's in the South China Sea, but hey, it could be Africa, right? Maps aren't always right. Maybe maps are upside down. Turn it upside down. That's still the Philippines. Nothing to discuss. <laughs> okay, uh, and it certainly isn't Africa, even if you turn the map upside down. Is it Saudi Arabia? Uh, no. Could it be India? Well, didn't we pass that already? Uh, oops. Yeah, we did. So, maybe it's Britain or Spain, uh, you know, in the middle of the South China Sea? Because, you know, those those are called countries, boy. They just work warp in and out of places all over the earth. You just never know where they're going to appear on a map. Ah, this has always been nonsense, and that's my point. Uh, we know an illiterate blogger will then say, well, that's not the Malay Peninsula, you know. Uh, you know, the one drawn there, right, uh, you know, where the Malay Peninsula actually is, uh, after India, after Burma, to the east, and before the Philippines, and south of China. No, that couldn't be the Malay Peninsula. It must be some other peninsula. Uh, well, I don't know what it is, because it doesn't exist, but it must be, because I'm stupid. That would be what he's actually saying, and he will. 
he'll say that. Don't worry. Uh, in witchcraft, he'll attempt. Uh, that's India, except, uh, well, India is already labeled. Duh. Uh, but he doesn't care. See, this is what we get. We get, you know, all of this back and forth and back and forth. And the reality is we've proven a position. And again, this, this settles it 100% once and for all. There's really nothing left for them. Uh, you know, their cases are in shambles on the floor. They already are, but, uh, but now nothing left. Now here's a cleaner view that I promised. This is from myoldmaps.com. They're actually a very good, uh, they sell maps, of course, uh, so they're a dealer. Uh, and uh, a, a ton of old, you know, ancient maps of antiquity they get a hold of. And, uh, you know, they'll sell these for a hefty price, uh, incredible price. So what they'll do uh, for those potentially looking to buy uh, is they'll actually give some detail and some history on the map. And they do a really good job, really. Uh, again, you can see Sri Lanka, India, uh, then go further east, and there is the Malay Peninsula, one would round, uh, and head north to the earthly paradise, which is the Garden of Eden, period. There's nothing to discuss there. Uh, and it is where? Well, it's in the South China Sea. Cathay is China, and this giant island within a group of islands uh, on the original map uh, is actually enclosed within the earth and a part of an archipelago. Uh, where? Well, it's specifically uh, in orientation. This is in Visayas, Philippines. Oh, gee, that's, that's where we find the Garden of Eden within the earth. Uh, it is southeast of China, below the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, really nothing to question there. The markers are indisputable and, you know, really done. Uh, notice further north is the typical label of Gog Magog, and we address this on other maps as well, because uh, we see this in the ancient world a lot, uh, and many might wonder, what exactly does that mean? How did they get Gog Magog up there, uh, you know, in, in Mongolia? You know, uh, it's kind of hard to picture, right? No, actually it's not. It's, it's an historic reference, and it's based on actual history. See, the Great Wall of China... Uh, is and uh, is there and was once referenced to as the ramparts of Gog and Magog. We cover that with references in the book as well, uh, which is why it's labeled so on the map. There you go. Uh, so it's pretty far north and yep, there it is right there, really far north. Uh, in orientation, pretty much, you know, fairly accurate to what the actual map reads. Again, placing paradise in the Philippines uh, down south there, southeast. Notice Columbus well knew this was an island and he drew it that way, or whomever drew it, uh, he or his brother or a friend who were following his research, uh, who cares who drew it. This most certainly was his mindset though. It's his research. That's firm. And again, we're going to show you, you know, a scholar who says exactly that. Uh, and according to his writings, we know them because we've read them. Many scholars haven't. Uh, they only know surface details in Columbus, and they really don't know a lot. And it's unfortunate they haven't done the research, but that's their problem. Uh, not ours and not yours. We're going to know. We're going to learn. And the two maps that he said, Columbus said, that he used on his journey, according to his journal. Now, how scholars don't know this escapes us because it's pretty easy. This map follows the 6,000-year mindset. Uh, we are going to demonstrate, and we already do in the book, uh, that the Garden of Eden has always been in the Far East, uh, in the Philippines very specifically. Uh, not all references are as specific, but, uh, but yet actually they are when you understand the ancient mindset in mapping. My Old Maps gets this as well, but... Many then confuse things because Columbus thought he landed in the Philippines. He thought he was in Ophir, and that's why he started saying so. No one knew the distance across the Pacific, so give the guy a break. Uh, yeah, he was evil. He had a lot of problems, there's no doubt. Uh, he even wasn't even allowed to enter islands that he visited uh, because he, was, he behaved evilly there. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, give him some credit. Uh, he took a trip that, you know, no one else was really attempting so much before. And the Caribbean is tropical, very similar to the Philippines. So you can see how he would land there 
and say, wow, this, this must be it. it. It must be it. Because he didn't know the distance and he wasn't even close. Uh, it's just never remotely the land of gold, though, not the Caribbean. Uh, nor is it the garden, even in Columbus's research. He knew better, uh, and he said better, he wrote better, and, and we have his data, it's there. So for any scholar, any teacher to say, oh, well, Columbus found the Garden of Eden in, uh, you know, the Gulf of Paria, and, and he found uh, Upaz and Zupangu in Haiti and blah, 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 blah. It, they, they are illiterate. They don't know what they're talking about, and they haven't read through uh, the full narrative. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a lie. Uh, he didn't know, but the king of Spain did, see, uh, and that's why he hired Magellan to go there in the Far East. Whoops. Uh, Columbus followed the mindset that the Garden of Eden, Ophir, and Tarshish, and Arsereth, uh, the land of migration of some of the lost tribes of Israel even, uh, from 2nd Esdras, which he even quotes, uh, was the same place in the extreme east of the world, specifically in the Philippines. My old maps agrees, and they better because, uh, well, that's right there in his journal and notes, so at least they represent it. Uh, much of academia won't. They just refuse to. Uh, they're not even reading the stuff, or if they are, they're ignoring what it says. He believed he found this land in the Gulf of Paria, uh, as the Garden of Eden, uh, but he thought he was in the Philippines. Understand that. That was his mindset, and he was not. He was in the Americas, of course. He began identifying Sepengu, Upaz, and Ophir, uh, the ancient lands of gold of the Bible, yet uh, King Solomon, you know, uh, never went to the Caribbean. No, <laughs> he went to the Philippines. Uh, his research does not ever identify anything in the Americas as these lands. Uh, if you read it, it's very clear the maps he used don't, don't show that. They show these lands in the Philippines. Uh, he just didn't know until his dying day. He never made it there. Uh, Magellan will complete this voyage in a few decades. Notice there is a note on the map, very fitting to Columbus himself, mentioning the land of Ophir where Solomon went for gold. Uh, he was obsessed with that because it was his destination in the Far East. Because it's the same as Zapangu, it's the same as Tarshish, and it's the same as Paradise. Uh, it also notes uh, Second Chronicles uh, three-year round-trip journey, uh, which we have well covered, uh, would place... One in that area of the Philippines, pretty much, where paradise is mapped here. Uh, he noted that fascination in his notes as this also records. One thing not in doubt is the dating within a decade and the fact that this is most certainly the mindset and really research uh, outright, directly, indisputably so, of Columbus. I mean, there's just nothing to debate there. Uh, so the fact that, that scholarship can't figure that out uh, and that academia hasn't bothered to figure that out uh, tells you something just right there. They're, they're trying to squash this narrative. For a scholar to not realize that is really disingenuous. I mean, really, the guy went, uh, the French uh, uh, cartographer, historian, whatever he was, uh, he went before you know their international commission uh, very enthusiastically. He he thought for sure that they would just approve, just like they would any other map, because they would, uh, as long as it doesn't threaten them. Uh, but not this map. Just got squashed, and ridiculously so, because this is absolutely Columbus 100%. Uh, whether he penned it, his brother penned it, a friend penned it, it was someone he knew uh, very, very specifically, because this is his research represented here. Uh, that scholar is disingenuous to do that. There's no doubt. Uh, they don't want to admit that the Philippines is mapped as the Garden of Eden by Columbus. But who cares what they want, right? There are tons of such maps. Uh, and we cover them in the book, and many are going to be covered in this series. Uh, however, in assessing this, Monique Pelletier, uh, or Pelletier, however you say that, uh, Pelletier, uh, actually, uh, confirmed this is, in fact a showcase for many of Columbus's ideas. Ha, ah, there you go. Uh, see, some scholars are, are forthright and honest and get it. Uh, she describes it in, uh, or he, I don't, is Monica here? She, 
I assume it's a she, but it could be. Uh, who knows? Some French names uh, could go both. But uh, this is its likely use uh, as a fine presentation copy, they say, uh, perhaps designed for unveiling uh, before the Spanish monarchs. Yeah, now this makes sense. Uh, see, this is Columbus's case, uh, and a very compelling one, obviously, because it worked. Uh, they followed and funded him, so there you go. Uh, and then they funded Magellan to do the same thing, so they still believed Columbus's case. Uh, but see, Columbus's case showed these islands in the Philippines. And Magellan got that, and so did the king of Spain, which is why they tried again after Columbus. Uh, they find these same lands in the same place. They believe this to be accurate. Uh, that is because, well, it was, and it remains so to this day, the one thing noted by this historian is the objection, and you can see where uh, she's getting hung up on it, uh, of other scholars well, who are extremely weak and incapable of testing their own question. And this is, this is our problem with scholarship. It loves to ask questions, but they are reckless and irresponsible to not bother to do the research to try to answer the questions themselves. They just don't care. Uh, they're agitating. They're not, that's not academic. Uh, so, basically, though, uh, somehow this is too difficult for this historian as well, though, so they don't even try to overcome it, even though they know better, because you can tell in their, in their words they do. Uh, it's very easy. This demonstrates they do not even know or wish to know, perhaps, uh, what Columbus said and wrote. Again, this person did, but they won't push back against academia. Why? There's too much pressure. We don't care about stuff like that. They ridicule us. Big deal. Prove it wrong. Oh, you can't, can you? No. Uh, it is rather hard to miss that Columbus equated the Garden of Eden, paradise in Latin, with Zipangu and Ophir and Tarshish as the same group of islands, which is exactly what you see mapped here. So when he maps paradise, he's mapping Zipangu, period, done. That's not an objection. It's illiterate is what it is. Uh, it doesn't need to say Zipangu, uh, Ophir, Tarshish, Upaz. None of those things need to be listed because paradise is right there. That's the same place. See, Columbus equated these. And that's no doubting that because that's what he says. There's no need for him to label it again. Uh, that's not scholarship. It's certainly not academic. Uh, and again, that, that, I mean, even reasoning as a child, someone could understand this very elementary concept. Uh, they just don't want to, clearly, whether they even know it or not. Uh, that is an illiterate criticism, unaware of what Columbus wrote. Now let's treat it as if it were ever credible. Uh, no, thank you. No, let's treat it as ignorant, which is what it is. But we'll go through a little history here in this video. Let's not forget, and I'm going to breeze through these because, again, we've covered them before, uh, and really Columbus identified in his journal two maps uh, by others that he used on his journey. It, it does not mean they are the only ones he ever viewed, of course, uh, and we never say that. And it does not mean uh, he did not create one or, uh, you know, uh, own one uh, of his own. Uh, whatever in this Columbus map, it's very clear this is Columbus's research specifically. He used two maps, though, uh, that have the same data, not created by Columbus. You know, these are maps that he saw and, and you know, uh, used on his journey. Uh, the Columbus map fully affirms the location here of paradise uh, as the land of gold, Christ, the Greek word for Ophir in Hebrew would be uh, Aria in Latin, uh, both gold, that's what it means uh, in all cases, uh, and Argyre, silver, or Tarshish in Hebrew, uh, in the Philippines, period. I mean, it's just there in his mindset in all three maps, in the map that he either created or his brother or friend did, uh, and it's on the other two maps that he said he used in his journal. I mean, why don't scholars know this? It's, it's not difficult. How can they be so unacademic is really the question, and then ridicule us, for saying these things, which are facts. Uh, so two maps from others 
uh, that Columbus used on his journey demonstrate Ophir and Tarshish, uh, in Greek, of course, as Luzon in Mindanao, Philippines. And this Columbus map is not strange in the slightest. It fits the same mindset. Duh. Uh, these aren't scholars. If they're saying, no, uh, that's a childish line. That's not actually scholarship. Now, we are going to cover Sipengu or Zipengu in the next video. Uh, but we'll save that for there. But Columbus did identify Sipengu based on these maps. And even in his own words, in the Philippines. Oops. Uh, it was never in Japan, and Columbus knew that. Uh, and so did Magellan, and so did uh, a massive uh, trove of maps we're going to show you. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. After seeing all these, you're going to be like, why did anybody ever say it was in Japan? Yeah, you wait, you'll see. Uh, we'll also cover the words of Marco Polo, and he even tells us, uh, nope, not there. Uh, not in Japan. Uh, we'll get there next. Again, the 1492 Behind Globe has the same data here. Uh, special relations with Sri Lanka and India. Uh, you head further east and there is Burma. Oops. Uh, yeah. It's labeled Aria. You know, the Aria of Ptolemy, which is not actually a peninsula, but it labels it as that was, that's where Ptolemy uh, was identifying because it's as far as he could see. It's as far as his map really went. Uh because that was his Golden Peninsula, not the Malay Peninsula, which is fraud. I mean, it's just a, a lousy reading, certainly not a cartographer, uh, anyone that says that. It's a fraudulent, unlearned, bad guess based on limited geography where he simply ran out of map, which give the guy a break. Uh, you know, he, he did this, uh, you know, before the first century. So come on, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be expected that he knew exactly, but he closed the Indian Ocean. Uh, and he doesn't see any islands. He, he ran out of map. He doesn't see any islands in uh, the rest of the Indies, uh, any of it. It's, it's all just non-existent as well as the whole Pacific. The guy did not know Southeast Asia or he would have represented it on the map. See, now he does represent some place names that he had heard of that are in Southeast Asia, which he didn't draw. He put the place names on there but in the wrong spot because he ran out of map and he couldn't put them anywhere because he didn't have any place to put them. That's pretty easy to understand. And yet that is the position, especially the British, this Ptolemy, 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 Ptolemy. You know, everything's about Ptolemy. Ptolemy didn't know anything about Southeast Asia. So done. The end. Let's move on to people who did. How about that? Oh, yeah. We have 6,000 years of maps that did. Ptolemy did not. Uh, and Magellan corrected him. Uh, you know, so uh, we're going to find out just how far off these are. And you're going to find uh, Magellan's going to move them up into the Philippines, which is where they always were. Ptolemy was just wrong. Uh, again, no big deal. But we got to keep following the data, keep following the information and not forget it like the British do. They forget Magellan. They forget Columbus research. They forget, you know, the Portuguese data, all of it. All of this information has been right there in academia all along. We're not showing you anything that's not a credible record. We're not showing you anything that is not, you know, something that every academic should know on this topic if they're going to try to talk intelligently about it and give people opinions on something, which they better understand, but they don't. Uh, they're not reading, they're not researching, and clearly they have no affinity to the truth on this topic. It's a shame. This map was commissioned, perhaps there is a blogger out there who does not know what commissioned means. Uh, it, it appears as, there's at least one. Uh, so we'll explain it, you know, so, so that even a child could get it. Uh, it's commissioned by the King of Portugal, period. That means he hired someone, which means it's his project because he paid for it. Does that, that make sense? Now, he hired a German cartographer, and when one does so, well, duh, it does not become then a German map. Talk about illiterate. There's someone leveling that charge, calling us a liar for saying that it's a Portuguese government-commissioned map and, and it's a German map. The guy's stupid. He is so illiterate, and he really belongs in jail. Uh, it is a Portuguese map because they paid for it, and it represents their exploration 
data. Duh. Uh, not a German dude uh, in his mother's basement where that blogger clearly works. Did we just make that up? Really? Uh, in all the sources that we provide, in all of the research that we have laid down, you've got to be kidding. Yeah, well, yeah. We didn't even try to prove that the Philippines was a fear. Wow. Uh, that is as dunderhead as you get. Now, according to the University of Cambridge, but of course, you know, that blogger knows better than Cambridge, right? Uh, from their Whipple Museum of History, of science even, uh, they say the earliest globe that survives today was made in 1492 by Martin Behein, a German navigator and geographer in the employ... Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, so if one is employed by another, the employer still owns the outcome, typically? Yeah, that's the way it works. Hmm. Uh, it, it's really bad. Uh, when one is so demon-possessed that they can't even see little basic language. Uh, it's really bad. And then they write a blog? Yeah, uh, that's insane is what it is. Uh, in the employ of King Zhao II of Portugal, probably said his name wrong, but there you go. Uh, this was a Portuguese map, not a German map. He, uh, the Portuguese king... Uh, was, you know, already in control of much of Indonesia and Malaysia at that time. Magellan even sailed for Portugal over there uh, before he went back for Spain in a western route. This is Portuguese government data represented as it was approved by King Chao II, who paid for it. That is why this same map was used by both Columbus and Magellan. They both say so in their journals and notes, uh, for Magellan, it's actually Picofetish Journal, uh, which specifically says he used the 1492 behind globe map. This one. There you go. When one zooms in on this uh, map in the area called the Philippines today, we, we all know where that is, right? Well, it, a lot of academics and scholars don't seem to. Uh, we're southeast of China, east of Indochina, and northeast of Borneo. Oh, but let's debate where that might possibly be. Maybe it's Africa. Maybe it's the Malay Peninsula sitting in the middle of the South China Sea as an island. Duh. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we get, and it is it is so illiterate, uh, it, it's pathetic and sad, really. So it's labeled Christ, the Isle of Gold. Uh, that's Luzon Island. Uh, labeled in Greek as the land of gold, which is Ophir. Uh, Mindanao is labeled, Arg labeled Argyre, or Tarshish, the land of silver. Again, same shape, and a little low, but northeast of Borneo, nevertheless, there is no other large island there. Maniola is Manila, and yes... That is right there on this map, too, uh, in the dialogue there next to uh, Mindanao, Argyre. That is not in the Indian Ocean. And see, it never was, nor is Sabadiba, uh, Yabadibi, or Katagara of Ptolemy. See, all of those things, including the Aria, which is not a Chersonese, this is not a peninsula, it's an island, uh, area island, it's all in the Philippines. It's Osias and uh, Luzon specifically that Ptolemy was mapping. Uh, now we're going to show you that because Magellan corrects it and there's really nothing to discuss on the matter. Uh, he's the expert, right? I mean, some bloggers not. Uh, and uh, not that they've ever produced credentials of anything anyway, yet they'll tell you how you're supposed to read the Bible. They'll tell you how you're supposed to read maps and how you're supposed to read history. And the guy's so illiterate he can't read a sentence. I mean, it's really bad. Tons of these islands bear the shapes of the Philippine Isles, uh, and there's still is the Isle of Pearl, which is Palawan. Uh, I mean, this is pretty clear. Uh, it's really not up for debate, and uh, even if someone wanted to pick at one of those islands, oh, that's not really the shape of Bohol, or that shape's too simple and anybody could do it, yeah, whatever. The point is, this is indisputable. This map is very clear, but then there's a giant island there known as Zipangu. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. That's not in Japan? Nope. Never has been. We'll prove that in the next video. This map's accurate. That notion is absolutely fraud. Uh, and here, 
are already two credible examples that Zipangu was never Japan. See, there you go. Uh, two maps there, and we got another one coming just in a segment that isn't even about Zipangu. Uh, wait till we get to the next video. We'll, we'll cover that in detail, and it is amazing uh, how scholars have been so pathetic uh, at reading. I mean, just reading. Basics, just missing. They don't know what they're doing. Though a bit more crude and 50 years or so before this rendering of the Tuscanelli map of, uh, what is it, 1474 or something like that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, was the other used by Columbus, and it also shows uh, Christ, the Isle of Gold, as Luzon Island, Philippines. Uh, right next to it is Zipangu. There you go, same place. Uh, that was Columbus's destination, fitting the paradise from the Columbus map. His research, same place, pretty elementary, really. Uh, one calling themselves a scholar that tries to dispute that doesn't know what they're talking about. At the same time that Magellan was on the way to the Philippines, the Spanish government also released Spanish Government Document 98, demonstrating that Ophir is Lucos, uh, equating those two as the same. Uh, showing the route to there the same as the Columbus map does. Hmm. Uh, the same as the Behind Globe does and the same as the Tuscanelli map does. It would take a complete dunderhead to attempt to debate all those, uh, but they will, and of course they'll lose every time. Uh, they already have, really. Also, history is clear. You can pause and read on the screen because uh, we're going to just blow through these next few slides. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, but Columbus proposed Ophir and Sepengu as the same place that he would discover. Hmm, not real hard. Columbus wrote that Sepengu of Marco Polo was in fact Ophir, and he actually rebuked Marco Polo and the great Khan, who he said failed to represent Sepengu as Ophir. Wow. Yeah. It's in writing. It's right there. Uh, they were always the same land. Columbus, thinking he landed in the Philippines, began identifying an island as Ophir. Yes, the Ophir of King Solomon. That one, because it's the only one, uh, who built the temple, he wrote. So it's that King Solomon too. Yeah, there's really nothing to debate or question here. Columbus identified the Golden Chersonesis as the Philippines as well. It was never in Malaysia, and Ptolemy wrongly redefined it as a peninsula. We'll show you Magellan's directions. Uh, when it was always an island in the Philippines. Magellan corrected that too. He believed these were different isles, but all located in the Philippines. Aria is Ophir, or Ophir in Latin in origin. Duh. Uh, they're the same thing. And it was an island, period. Ptolemy had no credibility on the topic. He can't change it from an island to a peninsula and not maintain credibility on this. The Garden of Eden and Land of Gold are most certainly positioned by the Bible, all credible history, and here we go, geography very firmly for 6,000 years as the Philippines. There's no debate because, well, they have none to begin with. Uh, there's no challenging this information. You just can't. Uh, they can try to pick apart a map here or there, but they can't pick apart the 6,000-year vast record. Uh, no one can dispute this, and those who will try, they're going to look foolish, uh, as usual, but even worse, because now this just gets so super well entrenched. The fact that academia uh, won't even look at this, and Bible scholars don't even care, because uh, they don't even know what the Garden of Eden is. Many think it's not even there anymore, and they don't know it's the Holy of Holies of Yahuwah on earth. Uh, both disciplines are, well, illiterate on this topic, and it demonstrates this is a control narrative that we've hit here. No, they don't want us to, but it's too late. We all know this already. We have over 550 videos on YouTube and other platforms noted in the description box. A little over three years ago, we began publishing these positions in books, 
and we have 11 now in uh, that amount of time. Uh, be sure to get your copy of Garden of Eden Revealed, the Book of Maps. Go to OphirInstitute.com for links. And next, we are actually printing right now uh, in the Philippines, uh, already out in ebook free, our Tagalog version of Solomon's Treasure. Uh, and we're working with an international distributor because uh, Amazon won't take Tagalog books. Uh, so eventually we'll try to get it on newsstands uh, overseas. But right now we're printing in the Philippines and we'll make it available here soon. Uh, and as we can, we'll, we'll do what we can to get it out uh, you know, worldwide as we have the other books. Uh, we'll be making announcements as we go very soon. Wow. This keeps getting better and better all the time. More proven. Uh, I didn't think it could get much more proven than when we left off with Solomon's Treasure. And it just keeps becoming more and more profound and affirmation upon affirmation. Uh, block upon block, brick upon block, precept upon precept, right? Thank you for watching. And always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.